Turn Right Machine Works. My name is Keith and today I'm going to replace the gap on my lathe and I'm going to show you how I do that. I have requests for this time to time and a lot of people don't pull their gaps because they're scared. Uh, fear will hold you back from doing it a, a lot of things in machine work because you know you have that that fear of either not getting it back right or you get that fear that uh, you're going to hurt yourself or somebody. And this just happens to be the fear of not putting it back and getting your lathe to run true again. Like, you know, who's to say that the person that took it apart before you didn't put it back right and you actually need to take it out and get it cleaned and, and then it, it'll probably run better than it did before. Either way, I'm going to go ahead and show you how I do that on my lathe here. I was born out of wheel. This is a dog plate. I have it drilled out for three hole pattern, four hole pattern, and five hole pattern to bore out props. Uh, here's a quickie picture of the wheel in here. All right, this is the plate that I, I'm setting it down out of the way. I got to pull the studs out. I'm also going to go ahead and clean up my mess. All right, normally I lay down a rag here and I catch up the majority of it, but I want to show you, and that is the most important thing, is to get it clean. Okay, once you get it clean, then you can position it. And I'm going to go through both of those steps with you. All right, so let's bring you around so that you get a better picture of what's going on at the gap. At the gap. Okay, uh, there's a good look at the uh, chips there. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm just, I'm not going to worry about all of this. I'm going to va regular vacuum this. I have two vacuums. One, I usually vacuum up my bronze, but I didn't clean out my whole chip pan. I just, this area was clean, so I know that these are non-contaminated bronze chips so I'm just gonna go ahead and pinch those and alright so now I can go ahead and vacuum that out I go ahead and pull these studs out of my way here first alright Okay, this and this surface are your lower mating surfaces, and then this face is the other mating surface. And there, I'm going to get the air now, and I'm going to blow out now, and then wipe with a rag. And I need to completely clean this whole area right here, so I know that when I come in with that that gap section, I'll be able to set it right down in there. All right, so let me get some air on here now. I start up high and I get everything everything high off of here. Then you gotta blow out this cavity. Blow off your leaf screw. I reach underneath these lips on the inside of the ways. I rub the rag around here because sometimes the air doesn't knock everything loose. Then I take my bare hand and I rub and feel these. When I originally first pulled these, I took the stone and I stoned all of these because there was there was some areas here that 
uh, needed to be attention and there was also some areas where somebody bolted the thing back down with chips in between that's what I'm saying is if you've never pulled your gap you need to pull your gap just to inspect your mating surfaces so that it, you you know that they are clean and everything is good all right now I can personally feel that I'm I'm clean and ready to set that now I'm gonna oil those surfaces just before I set it in there but now I need to prep the gap in the same fashion so I'll bring you around and uh, we'll, we'll take care of the gap all right I have the gap set up here on I have this little stool that I like to so I don't have to bend all the way over and it's kind of up here and this is the mating surface here for the bottom and here's the mating surface I get in here and I've already blown this out but I get in here both directions I make sure that there's nothing in there. The one thing I haven't done is I haven't taken a rag in here. Anything that's going to come loose, you want it to you want it to come loose. If you have a solvent tank or a tank that you can dip it and rinse it or whatever, you can do that as well. But you're still going to be blowing it off at the end, and you're going to be wiping it down and getting a personal touch feel to it. Okay, the same thing I did underneath the ways over here, underneath over here, behind the whole thing is ready, you know, it's wiped down and it's and it's free. And I get it set up like this because I'm once I pick it up, I pick it up with two hands and I go straight up. I don't none of these surfaces are setting down or touching anything. I got them open air so that I know that there's nothing on them. Okay. Now I'm gonna apply a light coat of oil and then set it in place. So let's bring it back around to where you can see it. Okay, I got my oil can. This is my whey oil can, okay? So this is whey oil. Same thing I use on the top of my ways that I'm gonna lubricate the bed and the carriage slides or any of the ways on my mill, any of that. That's what I'm using is whey oil. And I just put it on these four areas, both of the bottom, both here. One. You want to always make sure that this area never rusts up, especially if you're using coolant. Sometimes these areas are vulnerable to rust. If you don't oil these up and, and your coolant goes sour on you and uh, or whatever, it can become corrosive and then you you got rust buildup. You do not want that in these areas. Okay, that's prep. Now I'm going to pick up the gap with both hands and I bring it in and I set it straight down. Okay, now it's floating on oil. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grab the fasteners that I've already pre blown off. And we have two Allen bolts go down, the big one goes there, small one there, and then we have two smaller Allens, and these go through and, and hold the gap to the bed and I get all of these in and down to where they're just finger tight One of these I had a little bit longer and I gotta remember which one. I had a bum thread coming in. I think that I think that one's okay. Alright. Okay, that's down. I usually do the gap before I put the three jaw or the four jaw back up here. Uh, so I have room to work on it when that three or four jaw gets out here. It's actually over your uh, your gap pretty much and it's uh, it's a little bit in the way all right and you can thumb your your feel here I can tell it's that way by the V right here and I kind of feel the V this it, it always unless something is underneath there this always feels level so the V is actually what I use to gauge my side to side and what I do is I'm gonna move you up so that you can see and we're gonna set up an indicator on the carriage and then we're gonna put that against the side of the the way on this V shape and that's how we're gonna dial us in okay I've got my dial indicator here and we're gonna 
bring this into position here and something like that down at that angle pretty well square and uh, it really doesn't matter where it's at uh, because you're going to be watching the difference from here to here and the, and the needle moving now before I actually do any snugging down word on, on these allens right here except for a good thumb pressure is I go ahead and I tighten up the two 3 8 bolts that go in here because I want those two gaps to, to be tight and I know that I can still tap this thing side to side with these with tension and you can see the oil squirting up in between that gap and oozing out on the top all the way around so I know that I'm, I'm held up against the end of the bed now I can feel this gap right here and it feels feels like I'm um, that way on it and the indicator will probably tell that and yes I am about a half a thousandth that way maybe a full thousandth the indicator's got a little bit of spring in that one direction Alright, so I tap back. I, I use my raw height. Now you can tap here and you can tap here to move your ways and tap here or tap here and go that direction. Alright, and I kind of like to tap out here and I give it just a light tap. And you're looking for no needle movement. And it's still just a tiny bit, tiny bit. From side to side, I don't see anything different. It, 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 the indicator actually shows me crossing the little crack but it comes up on the other side exactly the same. Alright, now now I go ahead and I tension down the center and I just use the eye of my presser wrench here to torque on the Allen and I know that's down and then I just double check it. And it's good. Physically feel it all right, gap is replaced. You can use closer indicators. You can, you, you, you can. This is, this is 1957 lathe. There's a lot of wear. There's a lot of use on my machine here. But by setting up and putting back the gap in this fashion, I've never had any problem with the accuracy of this lathe, other than its normal wear over the years and years that I've. I've used this lathe. All right, and that's pretty much putting your gap back in your lathe. All right, there I am. I'm set up, ready to move on to the next job. I hope this closes the gap on your inquisitiveness on how to reinstall your gap once you pull it. Um, I know most of the time it's just a fearful thing, and the feature is given to you with the lathe. It's it's there to use. It gives you a lot of options with your machine. You should exercise them. Don't be afraid. You just take the time and you make sure it's clean and you put it together and you dial it back into the way the wave bed of your lathe. Alright. Um, until the next video. Get her done.